Okay, let's talk about bots, because I think that is probably the biggest uh, topic going on in tech totally. right now, right? So uh, obviously Facebook, you, Telegram, I mean, pretty much every messaging app under the sun has done some form of bots right now. Why should we care about bots, Ted? What's the big deal? Yeah, I, I think there's sort of two things that are interesting about bots. Um, the first is that like the app store distribution is just completely broken. So, so bots are the new apps? Is that what you're saying? Well, so let me talk about what, what problems bots can solve and then where we think they're going. So on the first side, like if you were to develop an app today and you want to get it out to customers, um, the place you're starting is only a third of smartphone users in the United States download any apps each month. So two-thirds download zero apps. So right away, like you're not going to reach two-thirds of the population, even if you could go door to door and talk to everybody with the best app ever that was giving away a million dollars to everybody or whatever. Um, and when you sort of look at the app store process, it, it, it sort of makes sense, right? You got to go to the app store, you got to find it, you got to download it, you got to put it on your home screen somewhere, you got to create an account for it, and then you got to learn how to use it, and all of this for an app that you might never come back to. The cool thing about bots is they get rid of all of that friction. So step one, you use the app you already have. You don't have to download anything, it's in the chat app. Number two is you use the account you already created. You don't have to create a new account. Um, you just use the one you create for the messenger. And then third is you don't have to learn a new interface. It's just a conversation. So as a consumer, you can dive in right away and immediately know how to use it. And for this reason, we think that bots have a huge distribution advantage over apps. But I think the thing that we're thinking about is it's still very early. I think a lot of people are looking at bots and saying, well, it can just do text, like, you know, text back and forth, like, maybe it will be good for customer service, maybe it will be good for, you know, uh, shopping, but that's about it. But we sort of, we think of looking at bots as just a way to deliver text, is like looking at browsers in 1996 as just a way to post research papers. You know, browsers in 1996 and websites in 1996 were just text. And a lot of people could have looked at that like, oh, it's just for research papers. But because websites had such a distribution advantage, the, the browser creators added more and more tools to allow developers to deliver richer and richer experiences over time. So they did photos and then videos and then they had elements that moved around. And before you knew it, like we weren't really installing PC applications anymore. And we think bots are just at the beginning of a similar trend where at the core, they're just so easy to try. And so the platform owners like Kick will add tools to allow developers to deliver richer and richer and richer experiences to where one day you might not need to download apps anymore. So you're saying that the kind of bots that we're seeing at the moment, which to be honest with you are quite, aren't that good, right? I mean, the, the kind of bots that Facebook has right now are pretty basic. It's kind of frustrating to try and buy something and have a conversation with somebody. You're like, I just want to buy like this. I know what I want. You've got to go through all these steps. So, so these are the kind of these kind of bots are not the future of bots. Is that what you're saying? It's gonna it's gonna go on elsewhere. If you do want to experience a weather bot that works, we do have one of those on Kick. On Kick, right? <laughs> we do not have one. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, but I I think the you know it's early days, and I think you know in those. Uh, advantages I listed, you know, no download, no new account, no new interface, a lot of people are taking that and saying, oh, like to order a pizza, you should just write that out. Hey there, I'm Ted, I'd like one large pizza with pepperoni, please. And you're like, that's like a hundred taps. Like, I just want to click one large pepperoni pizza. And so that's what platforms like Kick allow with suggested responses. It feels like a conversation, it's like, hey, what can I get you? But it's actually a UI, you know, pizza, fries, something else. So, so, the, so the real beauty about bots is maybe not the bots themselves, but it's the way that everybody's using uh, ch chat, right? So chat is on every single phone. So you don't have to download the new apps, you already have the interface there. Yeah, you don't have to download an app, you don't have to create an account, and that first experience is so natural that you can pull the customer so, so into it, it, it right I mean, away. it might not actually be bots, right? You could build a website inside the app and just bring that to somebody else. It hasn't got to be a bot. Well, I think bots are sort of the distribution point. But for example, we've seen games on the Kick platform where it will start with a bot, but then it will be like, OK, it's time to, to, to complete the mission. And you click it, and it's a full web, web view that pops up, and you're in like a full immersive, high graphics game right away. And so you're just playing the game. And then the mission ends, and it's back to the bot. So we think the bot is sort of where the experience starts. But it could push you to a, a website. It could push you to a native app one day. It sort of ties everything together. Okay, so you